and gentlemen, honoured guests and dignitaries, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the 2005 Ethnic Business Awards. For nearly two decades, these awards have triumphed diversity over international conflict, regional dispute and varying political climates. The success can be credited to the perseverance and determination of one man, Mr Joseph Asaf, Chairman of ETCOM. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome Mr Joseph Asaf. Good day. This is how I was greeted when first I landed in Australia. But I understood that this meant not only hello, it also meant welcome. So to you all, I extend a very warm welcome to the 17th Ethnic Business Awards. I can't believe we have been doing this for 17 years. I can't believe that this is going to be shown on television in more than 40 different countries. That in 17 years, we have seen thousands of applicants, hundreds of finalists, dozens and dozens of winners from just about every country in the world all living and working here in Australia. In fact, I can't believe it. But how come it has been such a success? I can tell you. It's because it's all about success. It's about celebrating and rewarding tenacity, determination and self-belief. Passion. A passion to succeed. A passion to meet, as we all have, in different ways, the special challenges which face migrants. Things like lack of language, lack of personal finance, lack of perceived infrastructure, whatever. In India, there is a fantastic industry, call centers. You make a call from here to check up on a business opportunity, uh, travel, tourism, market research. There is a good chance that call will be rerouted and answered in Mumbai in English. But if there was to be any place in the world where it would be possible to set up a multilingual call center, a number you could call from anywhere in the world and talk to someone in your own language, this would be the place to do it, Australia. And why? Because we are able to put in place on the end of a telephone any number of Portuguese or Italian or Greeks or Koreans or Japanese or Chinese or Turks, or Arabs, or Vietnamese, almost any race you can name. So, such call centers exist right here in Sydney, made possible because we are the World Bank of Languages. Languages spoken by migrants looking to make the most of their opportunities. The Ethnic Business Awards are one simple way of focusing that idea. Australia is a melting pot of cultures, and here tonight, we have another opportunity to get a taste of just some of the cream that has bubbled to the top. I want to thank our judges, our many sponsors, and above all, Australia, for making tonight the celebration that it deserves to be. So, thank you. Good luck and good day. Tonight we should not only celebrate the men and women who have been nominated, but a system of government that has embraced their journeys. It's a testament to the Australian notion of mateship that tonight we have many representatives from our government joining us here this evening. <laughs> Officially representing the Prime Minister of Australia, Mr John Howard, we have the Honourable John Cobb, Minister for Citizenship and Multicultural Affairs, who will now officially open the 2005 Ethnic Business Awards. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honourable John Cobb. Thank you very much and good evening, uh, Joseph, uh, and one and all. It is an honour to be representing uh, John Howard, the Prime Minister, tonight. And I would now like to read to you his message to the 2005 uh, Ethnic Business Awards. It gives me great pleasure to provide this message of support for the 2005 Ethnic Business Awards. The Ethnic Business Awards is a significant event as it embodies our nation's acknowledgement of the valuable contributions made to Australia's development by our diverse communities. Our lives, our lives are enriched by the mosaic of cultures that collectively form our modern society. 
Our cultural and ethnic diversity is a deliberate choice and one which delivers enormous advantages to this fast-changing world. The awards are symbolic of the hard work and dedication of the millions of migrants who have chosen to call Australia home. With ambition and drive, migrants to this country have succeeded in building new lives in our communities. Australia? Australia is proud, very proud, to welcome these migrants to our diverse society. Our cultural and linguistic diversity not only contributes to the vibrant social fabric of our communities, it del also delivers significant and tangible benefits to Australian workplaces. I send my best wishes and support to all those whose achievements are being recognised at the 2005 Ethnic Business Awards and congratulate the organisers on what I am sure will be a successful event, John Howard. I, uh, I <laughs> thank you very much. And on, on behalf of uh, John Howard, I have enormous pleasure in opening the 2005 Ethnic Business Awards. Thank you. Each year, the Ethnic Business Awards receives over 100 nominations, and from these 100, eight finalists are chosen. The group of judges, very esteemed as they are, includes Ms Carla Zampatti, renowned fashion designer, businesswoman and chairman for SBS, Ms Eve Cristani, professional director and consultant to major finance and legal industries, Mr King Fong, OAM, prominent businessman and consultant within the Australian Chinese community, and Mr Arthur Sanderson, the former general manager of the National Australia Bank. <laughs> These four companies represented in the large business category began collectively with, give or take 50 cents, approximately 2,251 Australian dollars. And they now collectively trade upwards of $350 million with future projection on growth reaching $1 billion Australian dollars in the next decade. This is an accomplishment of an epic scale and from where I can see it, there is only one winner here tonight and that has got to be Australia itself. We start tonight's presentation, absolutely, thank you, over there. <laughs> We start tonight's presentation with the youngest nominee of the evening, Mr Mark Mehe. When I was 13 years old, I always dreamt of having these massive buildings. And I used to go and stand in front of massive building and I said to myself that one day I want to build something like this. So I've tried, I kept dreaming and kept dreaming until I achieved what I achieved today. When I came to Australia, I was 20 years old. The things that I used to hear from, about Australia, equal opportunities, Australian attitudes, good environment, and that motivated me to come to Australia and get my education and start business in Australia. When I arrived in Sarawai, I uh, wants to finish my studies, uh, get a degree um, in uh, mechanical engineering, um, then I developed that into business management. Um, then this is what played big role in my life to get the business set up and get business minded on the business to uh, do what I'm doing today. When I was growing up back in Lebanon, I've learned this business through my grandfather and my father and I've seen something that can be developed and this is what I've done in Australia. I've developed the business to a stage that we can do huge enormous buildings um, uh, that consist of shopping centres, uh, high rise buildings, uh, big warehouses and other other stuff. Southern Cross is a company of five different aspects. The first one is the in-house shop drafting. Um, secondly is the manufacturing aspect. The third is the sand blasting and painting. Uh, fourth is the uh, transport aspect. Then the site installation aspect. Uh, the thing that made Southern Cross successful through this short period of time um, is and made Southern Cross unique is the uh, have everything in house controlling everything from A to Z. It's uh, it's one stop shop. The client is uh, happy with this service, and I would like to keep enhancing 
and, and, and adding more high-tech machines to the business. I, I named it Southern Cross because Southern Cross is on the Australian flag and that represents Australia and represents me. And now the company Southern Cross Rig and Constructions is going internationally and this has given Australian market very good name and I'm representing Australian community and business overseas as an Australian person creating massive business overseas and bringing more business back to Australia and bringing more and people back to Australia to work in Australia through the company. Um, I would live and die for Australia. Now, Fred Ferreira arrived in Australia from Portugal with only one qualification, a relentless entrepreneurial spirit. He's as humble today as the day he arrived and though, it's hard, though it is to be noted that he will not allow us to call him Commodore, 15 years ago he was knighted in Portugal for his outstanding contribution to the community and his work abroad. Well, I, I came to Australia um, 35 years ago and um, just started my first job as a bricklayer labourer and uh, earning about $100 a week. And uh, within now 35 years later, I, st I have this company going for 31 years, turning over this year in excess of $130 million and will double its turnover in the next three years. I came from a, from a modest uh, farming family and when I got to this great country, I said, geez, what an opportunity to start. Before when I see a site, you look at the site, you start to imagine to yourself, what can I put here? What kind of building? But, uh, it's very important also not just to, to build but to have quality, to have a quality project and, uh, and to have a sending on the end that you feel you have to be proud of. You go past and say this is something I did, this is something I helped creating, you know, that's what I love with me. Uh, Fred's got a, a real passion for, for the business and the product he's trying to put out to, to the community. Um, he's, he's very caring of, um, of the fellow employees, of all his employees. Uh, white form encompasses a very family family type atmosphere where, where Fred, um, as I explained, uh, holds an open door policy, uh, always talks to the people and explains to them the next step of the business and where we're, where we're heading for the future. White form, uh, we've been in existence for over 30 years in the formwork side of things. Uh, we've become the, the largest form worker in the country. Um, within the past five years we've um, we've expanded out in the building building division where we are constructing our own type of projects, our own developments in, in residential development, commercial and industrial um, and that, that they're allowing us to, to, to build the facilities of the Horizon brand. We've undertaken the Westfield of Bondi Junction. Um, we've, we've undertaken a lot of Westfield work including, including Burwood, Hornsby. We're currently undertaking uh, Westfield Liverpool and also Westfield Chermside which is in Brisbane. Um, some of the other jobs um, include um, Lane Park in Brisbane, um, 126 Phillips Street in the city of Sydney, um, the Ansett Terminal which is now the Virgin Terminal. There's a huge labour shortage in the Australian market, especially in the construction industry. Um, we've, we've tried to, to, to rectify that by, by bringing skilled labour across from overseas. Uh, we've had nom 30 nominations approved uh, to bring labour across from, from, from Portugal and other areas through Europe. Uh, in turn, at, uh, by building, building the, uh, bringing these skilled employees across, um, it, it provides us a vehicle to train the, the Australian employees that are available here in the local market and basically upskill up them in the, in the technical side of, uh, of the construction industry. We have been listed on BRW magazine on from top 500 companies, private companies in Australia for the second consecutive year. And, um, we actually improved our position last year from the previous year to, later to this year. It feels great, uh, but I, as I said, you don't, you don't think of this on a day to day. You work, you get done, you do your work, you do your best possible, and um, that will come, uh, will come after. But, but being one of the top five of the private companies in Australia is a great feeling for us. Dambo's Food Service is a family business operated with the Greek sense of passion and commitment. We came in Australia in 1958. 
and they just felt there was a lot more opportunity and I'm thanked them every day since. We came to Australia a little bit after that, 69, 70. Um, I, again, similar circumstance for a better opportunity. We came here the same reason that Nick said he came. My father came to Australia and then about six months or eight, six months later, then he brought us over. The, the, the cultural um, history and what we went through and what my parents went through in, in the old days it, it all definitely has is, is, is created a, a memory there of how hard it was. It's also ironic that uh, a little company like ours, with three Greek uh, uh, surnames, is distributing to more Australian schools per state than any other distributor in Australia. So we're the largest school canteen distributors per state in the whole of the country. The business itself is uh, comprised of quite a few different entities now. It started off purely as a distribution business with Greg doing dim sims and spring rolls to a few shops and takeaways. Uh, being an ex-teacher and uh, knowing the potential that was there at the schools, uh, he really wanted to get into that market of actually supplying the school canteens with a lot of their, their needs, their chips, their bags, their soft drinks. Uh, anything possible that we can supply them wood. So that's where we actually started uh, formalising that market. We actually formalised it for the first time ever. We tailored our business for that market. Processing came aboard more because uh, I think it was, it was very limited menus in the canteens back in those days. So we thought, you know, we um, take in different areas of the marketplace, like you know, in the seafood, the fish and chip shops, takeaways, chicken bars. It just gave us that wider sort of range rather than just one particular area. We have multicultural employees from uh, Maoris to Somalians to Colombians to English to Italians. Uh, you can keep on going. And we'd like to prove that the Aussie companies, the Australian companies, can be as competitive as overseas cheap labour companies because we're efficient, we're smarter, we're dedicated to good systems, and we're you know we practice best practices. And we love the idea of training and education because in the last three years we have really changed this company around. Nothing compares to Australia. There is no doubt in my mind that every time we come back here we kiss the ground one more time. Extra, one extra. Because we realise what we have here. We're lucky enough to have lived in other countries and travelled in a lot of countries in the world and we appreciate the opportunities that this country has given us. It's still the best country in the world. You couldn't do what we've done in other countries that, that, you know, as easily. Mehmet Karamimus lived a humble existence in Turkey, making cabinets by day and driving a taxi by night to support his wife and three boys. Coming to Australia in 19... 87 February in arriving in Australia. My pocket is in $150 and three kids and my wife. When arriving after three days, I starting for Ford for working. Uh, I did for welding uh, in Ford Motor Company. Uh, um, my my uh, job is for actually for cabinet making uh, by trade, but I'm driving taxi. Um, we came to Australia for a reason, and that was to work hard and make a better living for ourselves. My father's English uh, is probably not as good as ours, or as good as he would like it to be. Probably because you can go to school, or you work hard, save up, and look after your family, feed your kids and your wife. And I think that's what he chose, and I'm glad that's what he chose, because we wouldn't be where we are today if it wasn't for that decision. My name's Stephen Jerbic, I'm the state sales manager here. Um, from Newdoor has stemmed new form and carabord. Uh, Newdoor does all the uh, raw craft wood uh, doors and the uh, vinyl wrap doors for, for the cabinet making industry, whether it's shop fitting, bathrooms or kitchens. Uh, new form is a secondary company which manufactures the uh, post formed uh, bench tops. Um, and carabord is a, a new venture which we've begun. Carabord melamines um, substrates in various formats which we put colours on or white whichever um, the client requests. To start off in a, a small humble garage, uh, 
behind the house in Meadow Heights to come to where we are today in a 70,000 plus square feet factory and to have the honours of a Turkish um, representative from the Turkish government, the Vice President, Mr. Bülent Arınç, do the honours of, uh, of opening the new facility for us was just an incredible honour. I think the most uh, amazing thing at the moment for ourselves is uh, being able to export. Um, we are at the moment currently exporting to New Zealand and, um, and Turkey. Um, and we do want to export our product to a few other countries. We've got interest in England at the moment. Um, we're talking to a, uh, a group in uh, the Emirates at the moment, Dubai. We do want to exercise our uh, qualities and ex expertise um, and our management skills in uh, Europe, the Middle East and, and Russia. Australia is a beautiful country. That's what I mean for appreciate the we we for we say to thank you for Australia because they for give me this opportunity for um, what I'm doing. That's why first I put on for Australian flag and after following because air company quality in those company quality in those company flag and for air company flag is for next to them. For nearly two decades, the National Australia Bank has been the proud sponsor of the Ethnic Business Awards. Indeed, for the first 11 years, the National Australia Bank was the exclusive sponsor of these awards. Proudly supporting the migrant contribution, National Australia Bank has honoured hundreds of businesses to date. I would like to welcome to the stage the Executive Director and Chief Executive Officer of the National Australia Bank, Mr Ahmed Fahur. Thank you very much, uh, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's a real pleasure to be here uh, tonight and I'm very happy to be representing the National Australia Bank. The NAB uh, has a very long and proud association with the Ethnic uh, Business Awards. We were the major sponsor when the awards were founded 17 years ago and we've been involved mostly throughout that entire period, other than for a brief period that I was reminded that uh, we weren't involved. <laughs> Tonight is a fantastic opportunity for us to show our support for all the businesses represented here tonight and to acknowledge the great contribution they've made to Australian society. So, <clears throat> uh, without further ado, um, I have uh, the pleasure of announcing the award winner um, for, for tonight um, of the large business category. So. The winner of the 2005 Ethnic Business Award for Large Business goes to Wide Form Group of Companies. General John Cobb MP, Minister for Citizenship and Multicultural Affairs, Mr. Joseph Hassef, Chairman of ETCOM, sponsors, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. What an honor it, what an honor it is to be the winner of the 2005 Ethnic Visions Award. The White Form Group of Companies has come a long way since I immigrated to Australia in 1970 and found the company in 1974 with only three employees. I must say, five of our first six are still there. <laughs> uh, 
More than 31 years later, through my vision and leadership and with the help of all our loyal staff, we have grown to become Australia's largest former company and a leader in the building and construction industry. 31 years is a long time in life, let alone in business. Our growth and success and the achievement of this award have only been possible due to the professionalism, dedication and loyalty of our hardworking employees. Once again, it is an honour to be recognised for our contribution to the Australian community and economy. I look forward to continuing the contribution through our ongoing growth and success of the Wild Farm Group of Companies. Thank you all. These awards have been made possible by a select group of like-minded businesses and government agencies that are committed to the Australian notion of giving back to the community. The sponsors tonight include National Australia Bank, Telstra, Gulf Air, Department of Industry, Tourism and Resources, Centrelink, ABC Tissue and Le Montage. Our media sponsors tonight are SBS, ABC Asia Pacific, Jade World, the Chinese publication Sing Tao, the Vietnamese newspaper Chu Duong, the Korean newspaper The Weekly Top, the Arabic El Telegraph and the Greek O Cosmos. All these sponsors understand the role of encouraging and supporting the migrant contribution and we do thank them for their generous and ongoing endorsement. The Australian dream begins with the 2005 small business category. Mr Michael Wu arrived in Australia from China with a medical degree but nowhere to practice. With no money, he slept with five other students on phone books in a one-bedroom flat. I came on into Australia as an overseas student, although I had to take a long process and a lot of hurdles to come out. But at last, I, I came into Australia and. Um, Pretty happy with that. I got a medical uh, radiology degree in China, but because of, of the language problem, you won't find a high level, uh, high skill required job here. When your stomach is empty, I don't think you think of that uh, sort of self-ego things and uh, what you want to do is I find a job, I earn some money and I can live on. I work various jobs, any job, restaurant, uh, meat process factory and shoemaker, cleaners. Once I got a, a job in a smaller binding factory as a machine assistant. Together with, uh, with my Zen production manager, two of us decided to set up our own binary company. Well, the way we start our business with little money, uh, little experience, and uh, the barriers of language as well, we uh, hadn't uh, had much confidence uh, that business world were going well and uh, we we thought uh, only a miracle can save us and that's why we named us uh, Miracle Book Binding and, and since then I took a fully over, uh, fully took over of my business and uh, I see the business growing uh, um, phenomenally uh, that was amazing and uh, I can, I'm very happy the way the business is going now. When I left China, I left my uh, fiance, and at the moment I, I left her, I told her that uh, one day I will come back to get you out of here. We go live together in Australia. 
first time I watched that program on SBS TV. Then I was just start about start my business. I talked to myself, one day if I can be there. And here we go to this year now, and I will be there. Roger Green, Alastair Irvine and Barry O'Dwyer were born in Rhodesia and ultimately fled the same country which is now known as Zimbabwe. What we found most incredible in moving to Australia was that the government and civil servants were there to help. I received a lot of help from the government when I started my business in the form of a, a Seves Nice scheme which was both a federal and a state uh, incentive scheme to get new businesses off the ground. For two years we worked the business as a family unit uh, and we had one employee who was our neighbour. Five years ago we received help in the form of another grant which was part of the dairy rep which helped us build our new shed complex. Uh, that grant was tied to employment and we assured the government that we would employ six extra people if we got this grant. In fact, we ended up employing 12 extra people. In the region at the moment, we are very, very short of water. And because of this, we have spent a lot of time getting a recycling plant working, which recycles about 85% of our water. Green Sprouts is a family orientated business. We grow healthy sprouts for, all the, for the supermarket chains, mainly Coles and Woolworths. Um, we grow alfalfa sprouts, bean shoots, snow peas, mung beans, and a variety of those with different mixes. Um, they are ready to eat and for those health conscious individuals. We have recently introduced into coal supermarkets a new product called Salad Sprinkles. We, we are a successful company because of, um, I think, the teamwork and the partnership. Uh, the enthusiasm for the business and um, the direction in which we all want to go. We are very sort of outcome orientated and once we set ourselves a goal, we make sure we go out and achieve it. Australians don't know how lucky they are. Everything works in Australia. Um, I quote an example of, um, as I said, I ran a business in Zimbabwe and um, I applied for a business telephone and they said, yes, okay, you're on the waiting list and it, it's going to take, it took me four years to get that telephone. Um, when I arrived in Australia and I moved into my rental house and I thought, well, I, I'd better apply for a telephone fairly quickly. And on um, phoning my server, which happened to be Telstra, um, they actually apologized and said they couldn't get the phone in by lunchtime that day, but they assured me that it'll be in by four o'clock. Um, I did actually tell them that was fine. <laughs> what has really made our success is the, the help we've been given by the community and, uh, as I say, by other small businesses, our transporter, local farmers, the banks and government organisations. They all have contributed and have all been part of our success. Lebanese chemists Rima and Samir Mabani are in the business of saving lives. They research and engineer basic makeup properties and products both in the pharmaceutical and automotive industries that lead to major initiatives both in Australia and abroad. We had very little education in Lebanon because uh, the uh, first, the languages, it was important uh, in Lebanon to uh, do the Arabic uh, language as well as the French. And we had no English background whatsoever, no English language. And uh, we started from scratch, actually, uh, at about 12 years old in this country. So I went to TAFE after high school. I did chemistry certificate then and then the associated diploma in chemistry at that time. I've always had interest in chemistry and science um, and when I knew Sam was in that area also so that's what made me decide to actually pursue it further. We've been married for 14 years. Uh, we've, we've worked together since 1993. We are chemists uh, in trade and uh, 
at 93 I felt that I needed to do something on my own as well on the side of my work and I registered a business which is the Australian Chemical Research. Um, we decided to branch out and, and produce and manufacture our own products and that's, um, that was also in the um, automotive um, industry. This high performance product that we're milling at the moment is espe especially made for the aluminium smelters and also used in the defence force. And this small portion will cost around $750. The very core of this manufacturing actually and the advantage of a small business is to work around and invent a product and make the product to the specification or the uh, user needs it and at the same time we manufacture it and mix it and mill it ourselves and package it. Since the SARS virus spread in Asia and lately the, uh, the Legionnaire disease in Melbourne, uh, there was a focus on antiseptics uh, to try and clean the air and the air conditioning system. We've made up a, a kind of a mix for them uh, that will work really well by treating the air quality indoors. We won't have uh, kind of a breakouts like we did uh, with the SARS or the Legionnaire which eventually may save many lives, uh, we will be trying to expand our manufacturing side of things more than the research and keep the research side by side to the manufacturing. So we will definitely aim at employing as many young people as possible in the very near future. Oh, we make a great team. <laughs>Josephine Lamb, born in China, is a woman of extraordinary vibrance, creativity and business savvy in a man's world. Literally, as her business is the creation, promotion, import and export of men's gifts. My father decided and he came over to look around Australia and he liked the place. So we whole family and do the business migrant and we all come to Australia. Women in Hong Kong today and they are very tough and they work, work very hard. They smart and they take a lot of important pos in a position in the government and also in the big organization. So it's, I think they, they, uh, they study a lot and they work very hard for the family and for the society too. My culture background and give me a lot of help because I see more, I learn more, I'm traveling from, you know, I know Chinese culture with the Hong Kong society like a Japanese culture too. So this is the help uh, me to uh, set up a business in here. So, because I can bring something different that Australian can't do in Australia. We sell, you know, men's gift, like lighters, wine barrels, coverings, you know, everything to do for the men. We have, you know, around 2,000 items in our warehouse. We distribute Zippo lighters and YSL lighter and uh, pens and we also distribute what we watch and we have our own brand like uh, Evelyn and Barbani and we distribute in Australia and we also export to other countries. I'm proud to create uh, Australian products. Our company is unique. Uh, we provide you know, service with other language like uh, Mandarin, Cantonese and Nogano, you know, one of our sales reps speak um, Italian and Greek. So the people, they, you know, feel more comfortable to buy from us because they, you know, they think we know them and they feel more confident with our company. 30% uh, of our company turnover is export and in future, we try to do more. 
all our business, the most difficult part is competitors. And we have a lot of competitors, but the, you know, everybody got the product. So how can you get our products, you know, for people to buy from us, not from, from the others? So we have to create new things all the time. And we have to uh, design our own, to have our own design and good quality and good service. Australia is our home now. Tonight's Small Business Award will be presented by a company whose origins in this country date back to 1901. That's 104 years and countless generations of Australians who have had access to technology and communication through the company we now know as Telstra. Telstra continues its commitment to the consumer and to the society it serves by presenting tonight's award. Leading this company in the role of Group Managing Director, Telstra Consumer and Marketing is Mr David Moffat, whose work encompasses all activities of Telstra Consumer products, including the small and medium enterprise segments. Please welcome to the stage Mr David Moffat. Wow, what an evening. Thank you so much, uh, Lisa, and it's great to be here, and I'm delighted to be at a forum where the entrepreneurial spirit is so strong. I have four favourite words that I like to, to comment on. Dream, build, inspire and lead. Dream great dreams. Build things that matter. Inspire others to exceed their expectations of themselves and lead. All of the others are nothing without the last one, leadership. And every person recognised here tonight deserves to be recognised for their leadership their inspiration, what they have built and for having a dream in the first place. I congratulate each and every one of you on your achievement. Each of you should be enormously proud of reaching this stage of the awards. To our finalists, I'd like to thank you for stepping up to the mark and the challenge of entering this year's awards and for the ongoing role you pr play in promoting business excellence within the community. On behalf of Telstra, I'd like to wish everyone success, thank you sincerely for your business uh, and to reaffirm my commitment to this event and to supporting small business in Australia. And the winner is... a wonderful Telstra customer, Green Sprouts. <laughs> Honourable John Cobb, Minister of Citizenship and Ethnic Affairs and other dignitaries, fellow ethnics, <laughs> it, is a, it is a proud moment to be recognised in your adopted country. To be nominated was an honour enough, but to win is absolutely awesome. We don't feel particularly ethnic and that must be testament to the truly multicultural essence of Australia. If you look at early footage of migrants arriving, hope and anticipation etched on their faces and a measure of foreboding, I tell you we can empathise because it is no difference in the new, in the new millennium emotionally. We all came to this country for different reasons. But whatever the imperative that drove us to look for a new home, it can only be described as true blessing that we arrived in this wonderful country, this truly lucky country. We will forever be grateful 
to the generosity, the inclusiveness and the encouragement of the Australian people and the Australian governments at all levels. I'd like to conclude with some sage words of wisdom and uh, our President of Zimbabwe didn't come up with many sage words of wisdom so I borrow from Nelson Mandela's inaugural speech. <laughs> and really I direct these words to the many people here, especially the other finalists. And what Nelson Mandela said was, if we allow ourselves to shine, we inadvertently give permission to those around us to do the same. Thank you. Of all the definitions of the word initiative, the best that encapsulates its meaning is simple. Enterprise and determination. And from tonight's eight nominees, one will be hard pressed to choose a winner. They are truly an extraordinary group of people. To present the award this evening is Mr Kramer Ball, General Manager of Gulf Air within the Australian and South Pacific regions. He was chosen to take this company into new directions. Gulf Air is well and truly catering for the Australian journey and we thank them for their ongoing support of the Ethnic Business Awards. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr Kramer Ball. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's with great honour that Gulf Air, second year running, is a major sponsor of the Ethnic Business Awards. Last year, I was deeply touched and humbled, actually, by the stories and achievements from the winners of this prestigious award. The finalists came from diverse ethnic backgrounds and a wide range of industries. This year, the calibre of the finalists is second to none, and I feel that these awards truly recognise the hard-working, passionate and spirited nature of ethnic business in Australia. The finalists presented tonight are truly inspirational and for Gulf Air we applaud their success. We look forward to continued, continuing to assist the growth of ethnic Australian businesses, particularly in developing opportunities offshore. We congratulate each of the finalists on your success and your contribution to what is truly a great country, Australia. So, my role, Thank you. my role is to present the initiative award. The winner of the initiative award tonight is New Door Proprietary Limited. Mr. John Cobbs, Minister of Citizenship, Multicultural Affairs, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen. I'm very happy to be standing here as the winner for the Ethnic Business Award 2005. I would like to, this opportunity be, to thanks to the organizers of to this event, to founder Mr. Joseph Asaf, Mrs. Erica Green, and the team at ATCOM for all their work in making this event this, uh, beautiful one and finally the judges for choosing me. I would, I would also like to thank all the sponsors like the National Australia Bank and Telstra with our other sponsor Gulf Air. Uh, would not be possible, I would like to also thank other winners in the category and maybe standing here in front of everyone, but I think we are all winners. We have all come from different backgrounds and achieved in our own way in different countries. This 
prove this it is will to survive and achieve has no racial barriers. We are all proof of this. This, this country we call home is a beautiful country. We have all come to Australia for better life or ourselves and for our families. Thank you again for this award. It is mean a lot to me, personally, my family and ourselves, my businesses. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I close tonight by saying that as an Australian, I'm sure like all of you, I am humbled and proud. This evening not only represents past achievement, but all future possibility and hope. Hope that future generations of Australians and migrants alike will know and understand that within this great country, anything is possible. And that the journey, however long and arduous, is always worth the struggle. Ladies and gentlemen, you are a truly inspiring group of Australians. It has been an absolute honour to be your host this evening. Thank you and good night.